Ayo, hey, Void Hunt here. A lot of people have been asking about my visual settings, and so I figured to make a video about the topic in general, along with covering my own personal settings. I feel like what's most important here is understanding which visual settings are most effective for you, rather than just assuming whatever visuals work best for me or anyone else will work best for you as well. Now I've been playing Kovac since just before 2020, and I've gone through many, many iterations of visual settings. Back when I first started, there wasn't the plethora of customization options we have now, but I also had no idea what I was doing either way, so it didn't really matter at the time. The first choice you have in visuals is deciding between a light background with a dark target or a dark background with a light target. I know some people adjust this according to the time of day, or for example, they'll play with a dark background at night and a light one during the day, but most seem to just stick with one visual setting or the other, including me. I'd say about the first half of my Kovac training experience was me using a dark background with light targets until I swapped, but I didn't swap because I necessarily thought one was better than the other, merely because I find these visuals easier to translate in the game. Typically, enemy players don't glow bright red in dark environments, and are instead often themselves darker in contrast to the environment around them. So I figured I might as well practice with darker targets, and it's as simple as that for me. As a side note, this is somewhat similar to the reason I aim train primarily with my subconscious while I'm consciously distracted with the video or whatever else I'm doing. As in game, I'm consciously focused on my game sense and predicting future outcomes or enemy movements rather than just focusing on aiming itself. One exception to this being whenever I'm trying to review myself as I play the scenario, rather than just looking over my own thought at a later date. Anyway, you've probably noticed that while using fully blacked out targets, I still have some color on my walls, rather than them just being pure white ones. This is purely for eye strain reasons. Having a more warm, vanilla folder-esque background is infinitely more comfortable for me to stare at, especially for night sessions, while still contrasting with the bot just fine. While I find a pure, solid color sky doesn't provide the same depth perception a normal sky would, I still like to give my normal sky a complementary color hue to the rest of the scenario, as this makes it a lot easier to track the target in situations where the bot goes beyond the scenario's walls and into the sky. Preference plays a big part into which visuals you might want, but there is a tangible benefit each has over the other. In general, a dark target with a light background is better for click time scenarios, and a light target with a dark background is better for tracking. Anyway, next are the walls, floors, and, for scenarios that have them, ceilings and ramps. Tempting though it may be to slap a solid color on them and call it a day, using textures can be very important here, as in addition to depth perception, they greatly assist with observing the velocity of any moving targets. This is because the textured background provides a static contrast to the movement, so seeing how fast a bot is moving relative to this becomes much easier than having only the speed it moves across your monitor as a frame of reference. On the flip side though, you definitely don't want the textures of your background to obscure your target in any way. I know earlier I talked about how darker bots more resemble in-game enemies, and that's why I run dark targets in a light background. But just because your enemies are often obscured by insane amounts of muzzle flash, smoke, explosions, bloom, and lens flares, doesn't mean you should train on a target you can barely distinguish from the wall half the time. Speaking of which, I'd recommend disabling Gibbs, hitscan graphics, and hiding the weapon in the settings menu for these exact reasons. I have a few personal textures I'd like to recommend myself. Plaster, marble, and gray and white wood panels are some of my favorite textures to use. They're all very good for giving you a sense of your surroundings as well as the philosophy of any moving targets while still not obscuring anything from view. Be sure to use the advanced options like scale, roughness, and full bright to further adjust visuals to your ideal preference. Next we have which crosshairs to use. Yet another thing I've gone through many, many iterations of since I started aim training. The same rules for crosshair color that apply in-game apply here. There's no reason to run a default white crosshair unless that's your preference for some reason. Popular crosshair colors like green, yellow, red, and violet all work well here, though yellow might be an issue if you use light backgrounds. Whichever color you pick, make sure it contrasts both the background and the target. Ideally, your background, target, and crosshair are all as distinct from each other as possible, whatever your color scheme may be. As for the crosshair shape itself, you want something that you won't easily lose track of, but is also not so intrusive that it obscures whatever you're aiming at. In my experience, larger, more obvious crosshairs have been better for tracking, while smaller, unintrusive crosshairs have been better for click timing. 
I'll include a link in the description to a website that lets you create your own Kovax crosshairs. Since I used it myself at some point to create custom crosshairs that I had used for a long time until just recently, when I had gone back to a simple default crosshair and then just a dot. The reason I've gone back to just using a dot is because a lot of the most recent studies have pointed to just a simple dot being one of the best crosshairs to use, and I've always kind of liked it, so uh, that's what I use now. It's important to remember that your preference matters a lot when it comes to crosshairs, and you just want to focus on finding something that you're comfortable with. Another thing you may have noticed is that my targets change color whenever the crosshair is on them. This is an optional visual setting I'm testing out, but I like it a lot personally since it provides the same information a hit marker normally would in a more obvious way when you're focusing on the bot itself and not the crosshairs during tracking. And it also gives a glimpse into how long you've been hovering over click time targets before you click or miss. I usually play with sound very low or off as well, since I'm watching videos or listening to podcasts anyway while training, and having an extra bit of direct visual feedback is very helpful. Just make sure that if you decide to use it, the color the target changes to still contrasts both the scenario environment and the crosshair itself. If you still want to stick with hit markers, there's also a similar method to this where you actually change the hit marker to be the exact size and shape as your original crosshair, but as a different color. So whenever you track a target or click a dot, your crosshair changes color, though this won't occur just by hovering over the bot like the bot color change will. I've actually tried using both of these methods together, but to be honest, it didn't really help my aim any better and just created more visual noise with all the colors constantly changing back and forth all the time. Next on the list, we have graphical settings. This isn't a graphics guide by any means, that's not the purpose of the video. But there's a few settings that directly impact visuals, especially now after the Kovac 3.0 patch. Post-processing now provides additional depth perception to all scenarios, so keeping it on at least low will offer a tangible benefit in that regard. Anti-aliasing should also be on in some capacity to keep the balls from looking super jagged, but shadows still have a big performance hit for many scenarios as of the making of this video, so I'd leave them off or on low, especially since they have very little value outside perhaps maybe balancing scenarios. So with that concluded, let me now show you what my own personal settings are at the moment. I use the drywall texture for both walls and floors with two slightly different colors to differentiate them, then use the white wood board texture for ramps and plaster fresh for the ceiling. The color will look slightly different for you depending on your monitor, but I just max out the red and green sliders and then lower the blue until I no longer feel the blue light searing into my eyes regardless of the time of day. For my optional enemy color change setting, I use a very dark red that contrasts both the environment and also the original fully black setting. As aforementioned, this is a recent change I've made though, so I'm not fully locked in on using just red. I plan to try a dark blue or maybe a dark purple at some point, as well as tinker around with the glow up color setting. But this is how my visuals are for now. As for my video settings, there's not much more to add other than what's on the screen at the moment. My setup is a 9900K and an RTX 3090, but I still play with the lowest reasonable settings for the most FPS boosts possible. I always play with the NVIDIA low latency mode enabled and boosted, as well as set it to Ultra and NVIDIA control panel whenever it's not supported in game. Well that's all for now, I hope you found this helpful and can now create your own ideal visual settings in Kovacs. As a quick recap, choose between dark targets and a light background or vice versa, make sure there's enough contrast between your crosshairs target and scenario, make sure your scenario's textures or your crosshairs don't obscure the target, optionally change the color of the bot or your crosshairs when you track them, and use anti-aliasing and post-processing to help with visual clarity while lowering or outright disabling shadows for extra performance. Thanks for tuning in, be sure to subscribe, I hope you enjoyed the video, and this is Void Hunt signing out.